Welcome to the Wine Marketing Podcast. This is episode number three, and I'm your host, Christian Ventura. And today I have a special guest with me. I have uh, Ellen Rona from Armstrong Productions in Monterey, California. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Christian. Thanks for having me on your podcast. I'm so excited to get in on the ground floor here on episode three. Yes, you are one of the very special first guests on the podcast. (laughs) Thank you for being here. Uh, Tell us a little bit more, Ellen, about your company, Armstrong Productions. What do you do? Great. Well, I'm a full service video production company and I've been in business for 12 years, although I've worked in the industry for 25 years. And just recently, I'm realizing that that what I do for other small businesses really could benefit the wine industry here in Monterey County. Um, Monterey County has just amazing uh, AVAs and and the terroirs, and I'm just learning all the the vocabulary. (laughs) But we, we grow some amazing grapes here and make some amazing wine. And there's a lot of really small, small vineyards and small wineries. And uh, as I talk to them, I realize they're having trouble selling their wine because their wine production isn't large enough to get distributed to the big box stores. And so they're doing it via their wine clubs and and you know smaller local retailers but they're really trying to reach out and you know like get more members in their wine club so i've been helping them out with that all right that sounds good very exciting and what exactly do you see uh working for wineries when it comes to video marketing what what exactly do you do for them well First of all, I've, I've noticed that a lot of them, you know, they, they're active on social media, and, but they mostly just post photos, which are fine. There's nothing wrong with photos, although videos get a lot more attention, especially like you were saying from, from millennials, if they want to start marketing, because you brought up the point in one of your previous podcasts that millennials just aren't drinking wine. And I think that, uh, that can easily change that it's not that they don't enjoy it. They've just kind of gotten to the fads of other things. Um, huh, now I got off track and I forgot what the question was, but Oh, what am I doing for them? For them? Right. <laughs> yeah. Is just helping them get, get their information out there and not just always have a pretty bottle shot. Um, bottle shots are nice lifestyle you know oh here's a bottle and a half a glass of wine looking out over some beautiful lake scenery but I think what people really want to do is to connect with these winemakers they want to see you and I you know I videotape one guy he's like ah my shirt's dirty I'm like that just makes it even better because what's better than the actual farmer out there in his vineyard testing the grapes and this was right before harvest you know he wanted to see if they were ready for harvest or not i'm like it doesn't matter that your shirt is dirty people don't care they want to see you they want to connect with you and video is the best way to do that yeah i agree with you a hundred percent i mean i'm a millennial and i'm i'm really you know tired of seeing i follow I could say hundreds of wineries in Instagram and all I see is bottle shots and lifestyle photos and it's all the same. It gets redundant. It doesn't create any emotion in me. But one of the wineries uh, that recently they opened up a new tasting room here in Texas, uh, they're called Augusta Vin Winery. They had this beautiful video and they had uh, like sequences of when they were started building the tasting room and it was a beautiful building and that caught my attention and they opened up last weekend and I drove all the way up there uh, to Fredericksburg an hour and a half drive just to go there and see it in person and And I I told them on video yeah and I told them I I really fell in love with the way you were presenting the building from uh, the planning and this the construction building process all the way till it was done and that's I think one of the key things that video provides for for wineries Exactly. And then, you know, the other hard thing, though, that I always help people through when I'm working with them 
is, you know, people are like you and I, we're just having this fun conversation and then they turn on their camera or their phone and all of a sudden they're like deer in headlights and like, hello, my name is this. <laughs> I have wine. And they get really stiff because they think that's professional. And I think that uh, especially older generation, like myself, marketing to younger generation, we feel like if it's not perfect, why would we put it out there? And the younger generation is like, I just want to connect. I just want to see you. Yeah, I want to see your dirty shirt that is smudged up from <laughs> picking grapes. <Yeah>. That's true. <laughs> So Ellen, do you have any tips, any uh, best practices, or what should wineries do to get started? Uh, I th to get started, um, I guess first I wanted to say is there's a time and place where you really should hire a professional to do some videos, and there's a time and place where it's actually much more effective to do your own, even if it's jiggly, iPhone videos or something. Um, on your website, on your homepage, about me, that should be a professional video. You want great lighting. You want uh, edited to music. You want to have uh, excellent microphones when people are talking. That's where you really want to have the professional marketing videos done. But on your Facebook page, how awesome is it for you to take your phone and do uh, either a quick recorded video or a Facebook live saying, Oh my gosh, look at these grapes. This is going to be our best harvest ever, you know, and then turn it on yourself and say, I can't wait to share these grapes with my wine club. If you're not in my wine club, you might miss out because, you know, I only have 200 cases that I'm going to be bottling this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all. Okay, talk to you later. I got to keep testing my grapes. Make them short, sweet, and shareable. It's amazing how many you know Facebook pages I go on where people are like, "Oh, I'm a private person. I don't want the whole world sharing my videos." Well, either put your videos on a business page, or if you are very small and just a personal winemaker. You got to be more open. You got to make things shareable. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I remember I saw one of your videos and you said that the website, you want a more professional video because it's probably the first impression somebody has if they are looking yes. on the internet and they find your website. But then once you go to social media, there's already been a connection somehow and you want to feel that closer one-to-one -one interaction where videos can be a little more uh, personal and informal and I love that it, it's really true when you think about it yeah so you know there's quick professional videos are to attract new clients or new members to your wine club and homemade videos are to connect with your current clients mm -hmm. and so that they feel like oh my gosh I'm seeing something that no one else can see mm -hmm. I'm seeing the grapes being you know processed and and hauled away with their little tractor and their little miniature tubs because you know they don't they don't make 10 million gallons a year mm -hmm. and uh you know that kind of behind the scenes that's what people love right you know i was i was thinking uh this was a tip i gave out a few weeks ago you know when you receive your your wine club shipment it would be so nice if on that shipment i get a card with a a QR code or a web address that takes me to a video, a personalized video, just oh, thank yeah. you for being part of the wine club and, and showing me a little behind the scenes plus a little bit of a overview, professional type video of the harvest, as you were telling me you were doing for some of your customers. So I right. think that level of personalization and surprise, it's one of the elements why people stay in a wine club for, for a long time. So I think if winery owners think about ways to do that and integrate video in everything they do, customer support, uh, new sales, I think they're going to really, really make a, a great impact in their customers. Exactly. And it's, you know, don't waste your time if you're a winemaker doing things that you're not loving or good at, such as technology, posting social media videos. You know, 
go out and hire somebody to do it and spend your time making good wine mm -hmm. because I certainly can't make decent wine, <laughs> <You know? laughs> but I can really tell a story about it, you know, and that's another thing, you know, tell a story, let people even tease them, say, well, I got to go now, but you know, I'm going to post next week and show you the progress that I'm making on whatever mm -hmm. status your, your vineyards in and things that, that, uh, uh, a vintner might think are dull because they do them every day are fascinating to those of us who don't make wine. Um, you know, I don't really know a whole lot about the winemaking process. I'm learning because I'm videotaping things, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, you know, when you're pruning your, your vines, that's fascinating to me. How do you do it? Do you just whack them all off? Is there a certain technique? Share that. It doesn't have to be a, a big ordeal over making a an epic video about it but uh yeah definitely i agree uh yeah m i could say most of the people in the world in any given location don't know about wine but i know a lot right. of people enjoy it even though they don't have all the uh, detailed and technical knowledge about how to make wine and at the end i, I always think that wine has been around for so long thousands of years and in other, uh, other parts of the world, wine is like food. It's part of their daily lives. Yes. So I think that if, if you bring that, you know, to a level that everybody can understand it and get related to it and look at it as food, you know, that you take into your body just as a meal, it's going to help, you know, get more attention and more people to get interested about, about wine in general. Yeah. And, you know, some people are really intimidated about choosing wine. And, um, you know, I've been guilty of this too. I'll say, well, that's a pretty label. I'll buy that one. Or if I'm giving wine as a gift, I'll say, ooh, that came from nearby where I live. I'll give that one for the gift. So, you know, winemakers need to think about rather than just having a pretty label, which is attractive and it's a great marketing tool, if they've connected with their people who can say, gosh, look at this bottle of wine I'm sharing with you at dinner time. Let me tell you about the oak barrels that he puts these in. It's amazing. He imported them from Italy and this, that, and the other thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, make it interesting. <laughs> make it interesting. Make it a story. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you, Ellen, have you uh, met people uh, or worked with people that they tell you, yeah, but I don't have a story to tell. I don't know what will I talk about. How do you deal with people like that in some cases? First of all, everybody has a story to tell, but they just have either told it so many times it's boring or they don't think anybody else would be interested in it. So what I like to do is just kind of find some sort of a, a why question. Why do you think wine is important to have with dinner? or an antidote, you know, tell me about the first glass of wine that you shared with your current spouse. Uh, tell me about how you use wine to celebrate. You know, then they'll go into, oh my gosh, I remember this wine that we had for Thanksgiving. And, you know, it brings back all these fond memories. And you just kind of have to pull a story out of them because it's definitely there. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Well, I like you know, I I've had a great time uh, talking to you. It's, it's nice to see uh, people like-minded that, that see the potential that there is in the wine industry of telling stories and reaching new audiences and especially, you know, using video like, like you are doing. I think it's a great thing. How can people uh, reach you and contact you to know more about what you do? Oh, thank you. Yeah, they can just visit my website, armstrongproductions, with an S, dot com. So, you know, armstrongproductions.com okay and uh the, all my contact information is there and i'm happy just to even chat with people and give you some free ideas of how to do things yourself because you know that's what it's all about it's about the connection perfect thank you ellen very much i really appreciate you being here on the wine marketing show and i hope to have you back sometime soon to talk about a little bit more about how things are going down in monterey Oh, thank you so much. It's been so fun getting to know you, Christian. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.